Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome to another video. And in today's video, I am sharing with you guys all the books I've received in the month of October. Whether it's review books, whether it's books I purchased, or like book swaps, and so on and so forth. So first of all, I'm going to start with three books that I purchased of somebody on a Facebook group. They were, well, at least a couple of them were ones that I heard good things about, and I was really, really excited um, that she was selling them. And I was like, oh, I must get my hands on a copy of these. Um, so the first of which is The Wives, and this is by Taryn Fisher. So I know that Colin Hoover and Taryn Fisher wrote the Never Never series. I really, really love those books. And so this is Taryn Fisher's book, The Wives. So it says here, it's a marriage full of secrets. You've never met the other wives. None of you know each other. You see your husband one day a week, which is on a Thursday, but you don't care. You love him that much. Or that's what you told yourself one day everything changes you thought you were okay with it but only having a little bit of a husband but you can't help yourself you have to start to dig so you begin tracking them down who is monday and why does she have bruises on her arms is she being abused by her husband your husband and what else is he keeping from you so is this like paranoia or is this actually like really happening so yeah so i just wanted to give like her book a try that she's written on her own and um, yeah so I've seen people like having this book so I thought like I'd get my hands on this copy and then the other book that I was really excited that she was selling um, was Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan I've heard really, really good things about this book um, and I love the cover to this version actually like it's a beautiful beautiful book so it says here it's one of the top 100 romance novels of all time on Goodreads so I wanted to lose myself in the small town of Pelion, Maine, to forget everything I'd left behind. The sound of rain, the blood, the coldness of a gun against my skin. For six months, each breath had been a reminder that I'd survived and that my dad didn't. And I'm always safe again, but the moment that I meet Archer, my entire world tilts on an axis and never writes itself again, until I trespass into his strange, silent and isolated world. Archer then communicates with nobody, and his whiskey coloured eyes, something intangible then happens between us. And there's so much more to him than just his beauty, his presence, or the ways that his hands communicate with me or on me. But this town is mired in secrets and betrayals and Archer is the explosive centre of it all, with so much passion and so much hurt. But it's in Archer's silence that we might just find out what we need to heal and to live. And it says here, a gorgeous tale of survival and the healing power of love. But you know what, as a top, 100 romance of good reads it makes me want to read it as well but i've heard really really good things about this book that it's quite addictive and that's a really really good romance story so yes yeah, so i'm really excited that as soon as i saw that book that was the first book that i saw i was like oh i knew that book in my life and then thirdly i got making faces by amy Harmon. i've got another book by amy Harmon, which i think is the law moses and um so this is about ambrose young who is beautiful and he was so beautiful that he was never someone that Fern thought that she would have until that he wasn't beautiful anymore. So it's a story of a small town where five young men go after war, one comes back, it's a story of loss and individual loss of beauty, of life, identity, and it's a tale of one girl's love for a broken boy and a wounded warrior's love for a remarkable girl. It's a modern tale of Beauty and the Beast, where we discover that there is a little beauty and a little beast in all of us. So yeah, so I'm really excited about this, but again, I've heard really, really good things about this book. And yeah, these are the three books that I got from that lovely, lovely seller. And um, so in the next four books I've got from when I was in Tesco. So on the 5th of October, I went to Jay's restaurant and afterwards went into Tesco. Actually, went into Tesco needing, would you believe, sawdust for cookie, my hamster. And of course I had to venture into the book section and the first book that I actually saw was this book here which is Beach Reads by Emily Henry. Now I've heard fantastic things about this book and when I saw it I was like oh I need this book in my life like immediately. So I know this is about two writers and they're on a holiday and they literally swap stories. So we've got Gus who's literacy type, who thinks true love is a fairy tale, and uh, January is hopeless romantic, who narrates her life as if she's in a blockbuster movie. So they're both 
running out of money, they were on a writer's block, and so they swap genres um, to see who gets published first. So I think if I remember, one is a chiclet, and I think the other is like, I can't remember if it's like non-fiction or something completely different, maybe like crime or something like that. Um, so, so he's got to re, uh, he's got to write the chiclet romance, and then she writes like completely the opposite. So I think it's it's either crime or it's non-fiction or something like that. So they literally just swap genres like that, and I think that's so interesting. I've had really good things about this book and yeah i think it's going to be a brilliant sort of book to read so yeah so i'm really excited that i have this now so as you can see it was a two for eight pound deal so i was looking around at what other books i could get so i picked up this one which i hadn't heard of before it's called mixtape it's by jane sanderson and it says here you never forget the one that got away it's got quotes from the daily mail good housekeeping and read saying it's fantastic moving and beautiful a fantastically written romance novel the grown up love story is gorgeously written. So, this is about Daniel, who was the first boy to make Alison a mixtape, which was years ago, and Alison hasn't thought about him for a long time. So, then a Dan's name pops up on her phone with a song from her past. And then Ali can't help but respond, and thus begins a new mixtape. They exchange songs, some new, some old, across oceans and time zones, a lifetime of different experiencing, and one of them breaks the rules and then sends a message. Uh, what if what might have been is yet to come I like the sound of this mixtape business um, that's what's like really really intrigued me just when I sort of like was reading about like that there was this old mixtape and then there's this new mixtape I like the sound of this new mixtape so yeah and it sounds almost like a little mixtape journey um, which you know is like awesome so that's the other book that I got for the two for eight pound deal then I went to like the children's young adult section of it and I picked up this book which is K-pop Confidential by Stephanie. Now, I was looking at it and I was like, is this an autobiography or something? But it's not, it's a fictional book that's about K pop. And it's about Candice, who is a Korean American teenager. I can't believe the luck she's put from thousands of auditionees to travel to Seoul and train it to become a K pop star. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, so I'm sorry. There's only one problem, she's not really cut out for it. The training is grueling, the girls are really mean and there's a rule of no dating which proves really really tough because she meets an idol one j and trainee young bay in the battle to debut candice must decide whether a spot in the most hyped k-pop girl group of all time is worth risking everything for so if you're a fan of k-pop especially k-pop girl bands this is your thing i love k-pop i love bts and um I'm really intrigued by this so I hadn't heard of it before and when I saw it I was like I must get my hands on this and so then that was part of I think two for seven pound and so I was looking at the other books that they had there wasn't really a lot that I was really really wanted to go for the one that I was sort of like looking at the most though was A Whole New World by Liz Braswell now I know that her books are like twists on like Disney stories so like this one for example is what if Aladdin had never found the lamb so it's sort of like how would it have gone um, when you know with the Sultan rises to power with the help of a lamp and then Aladdin's a street rat and he meets Princess Jasmine's and the world collides how can they stop Jafar without finding the lamp themselves so I really like that I like those what ifs and I'm really really intrigued. There's other books as well um, that's sort of like from this and they are like based around like the evil characters um, so sort of like um, we've got the Little Mermaid one where you know it's sort of like the story behind how they got so evil and then you've got Cruella de Vil's one and then you've got Maleficent's, Male Maleficent's one and yeah there's like various other sort of villains of like how they became really cruel um, and I've read The Beast Within, I read that years ago. I can't remember what I rated it though, I think it gave it like 4 out of 5 Kit Kats. But yeah, this one I'm really intrigued. I love Aladdin the story and I love the Disney Aladdin. And I'm just intrigued of like, you know, what would have happened if you never rubbed that lamp and had the genie. You never had good old Robbie, Robin Williams coming out. So, those are the books that I got um, from the 6th of October and also books that had arrived literary on the 6th of October as well so I've got seven extra books here 
and I'm looking forward to reading all of them. I've got a couple extra editions that I've got in October. This one I got from Sainsbury's in my town and so this is Love Songs for Skeptics. So I haven't heard of this bit before but I really really like the sound of it and also Beth O'Leary has quoted on it saying it was an absolute joy but when I was reading it I really liked the sound of this so this is about Zoe and when she was a teenager she fell in love with a guy called Simon who was her best friend he was the boy next door but then he moved away before she could tell him how she felt she's been nev never able to let go because of that situation and it's almost 20 years later Simon comes back to London he is single he's charming and obstacles get in the way so he begins to wonder whether after all these years she and Simon are meant to be or what if despite what all of the songs and the movies say your first love isn't always all it's cracked up to be or are they destined to shuffle around their feelings for each other no so it's sort of like almost like a what if story and sort of them um seeing you know all those years ago is it fate that he somehow come back and you know did he feel the same and I feel like it's going to be really cute. I love the cover to this as well. But yeah, it was really, really cheap in Sainsbury's and I thought I'd get my hands on it because I do love myself a good chocolate. So the other book that I got, there is this like little bookcase with a sort of glass cabinet that you can just shut and put the clip on. And it's literally just like up the road from me. It's like literally probably a like five, ten minute walk from me. And it's just on the corner at Crossroads. <laughs> And um, for the first time today, I actually went up to it. Aaron was telling me this, actually been there for quite a few years, ever since he's even lived here, and he's lived here for like probably three years now, I'm talking. And I've never noticed it before. And like, I went up to it, and on the front of it, it says like, books for the community, take a book, have a read, put it back when you're done, or like put some books that you've read to pass on. It's one of those free libraries and I think it's such a brilliant idea. I've seen other people around the world have their own little like book libraries and I'm possibly thinking of like maybe one day like doing my own um I can get like a little like bookcase with sort of like cabinet bit like how they've done and sort of put my books there um especially the ones that I like can't sell on or I want to pass on to charity especially like used ones if I ever get some from charity that you know people don't want then like by the end of the month I could just put it there so for now I'm just using this book casing and I managed to get rid of quite a few books I feel really good that I've managed to unload so many books I got rid of I think like seven books so it feels really good and so I was looking there to see if there was anything that you know I haven't got or that sounded of interest to me the book that I picked up was Flip Flip by Martin Bedford and I remember getting this once from the library, I don't know if you guys have been following me ever since the beginning, but quite a few years ago I got this from the library, never got around to finishing it, I had the paperback version though. This is actually a library, an ex-library edition, and I can tell because like the ex-library sticker there. And this is about 14 year old Alex, one day he wakes up to find himself in the wrong bedroom, a different house, different part of the country. The family at the breakfast table are strangers to them. When they look in the mirror, they are literally aren't themselves. They are a different boy. A boy called Philip or Flip. But more importantly, how will he switch back to become himself again? So it's a psychological thriller. And I really like the sound of that. I like mysteries like that. Um, and it's, you know, it, I just, yeah, I just really like the sound of it. So yeah, so I got my hands on this physical copy and I'm really, really excited about this. So it is the 24th of October today and I've got a couple more books that have come in the mail. They actually arrived yesterday. And so the first of which is Maybe Now by Colleen Hoover. This is the, like this sequel to Maybe Someday, which is the book that I'm currently rereading. And it's like the um, first book. Um, this by Colin Hoover and so it says here what's more important friendship loyalty or love Colin Hoover and Griffin Peterson collaborate once again to bring fans of maybe someday back into the musical world of Ridge Lawson and Sidney Blake who are the first uh, main couple of people in maybe someday and um, we've got the character Maggie Warren and Bridget and it's a follow-up to that so that's all that's um, really on this so um, I don't really know like what's going to happen like in this book um but we are seeing um returns from those characters like Ridge, Sydney, Maggie and Warren and Bridget 
so yes yeah, so I'm looking forward um, to this and it's a nice chunky book so I totally didn't realize that there was like a, a sequel to maybe someday so I'm really really happy that I've got this one and then the other book that came this is like Colleen Hoover's new and latest book this is Heartbones and um, I'm always like trying to keep tabs and <laughs> on all of her new books um, I'm one of her groups on Facebook and I'm just always trying to be like what is she writing next she seems to be just writing all the time and so yeah this came out this year and this is literally about two people so we've got Samson and Becca now Samson comes from a family of wealth and Becca comes from a life of poverty and neglect so two of them spend a summer together as neighbours um, they soon realise that money is one of the few things that they don't have in common. Their bond is very, very intense and the summer separating them from the start of their new lives on opposite ends of the country. So they decide to stay with like pretty much a summer fling, but then they don't realise that a rip current is coming and it's about to drag both the house out to sea. So literally it just sounds like it's going to be... Um, literally just about you know from one end of being poor one end of being rich and like you know and you know does money really really matter in these sort of things when you know you've got that sort of bond together so I'm really looking um, forward to that one it does sound quite good and I just I just love Colleen Hoover's books like I have given all the ones that I've read by her so far literally like five out of five Kit Kats and I've read a few from her now like I don't really know actually if this book will mention all of her published works but I know that I've read quite a lot by her now because this is a self-published book so no no doesn't have a list in, in these self-published books um so yeah so it's um I'm really really happy that I've got these couple of books today is the 11th of October and I've got some more books I've received in the mail so the first of which was somebody was selling this book on Facebook Marketplace and I found it and I was like oh this is a book that I hear everybody talking about at the moment and this is My Dark Vanessa and this is by Kate Elizabeth Russell so it even says on the front here um, as a quote the book everyone will be talking about by Louise O'Neill Package of Dynamite by Stephen King Stunning and Absolute Must Read by Gillian Flynn Marion Keyes has quoted it on the back just loads and loads of quotes just saying how amazing it is and also I am hearing it's really really good so this is about Vanessa who when she was 15 years old she had sex with her English teacher she's 32 years old now and in a storm of allegations against powerful men in 2017 the teacher, Jacob, has just been accused of sexual abuse by another student. So Vanessa is then horrified by this news because she's certain that the relationship that she had wasn't abuse, it was love. She's very sure of it. So she's forced then to rethink of her past, to revisit everything that happened, and to redefine the great love story of her life and her great sexual awakening as rape. And now she must deal with the possibility that she might also be a victim and one of many. So it's bold and powerful, it goes straight to the heart of some of the most complex issue of age. So I know that there's obviously trigger warnings of rape, um, and yeah, the relationship between student and teacher. And yeah, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. And then I had like two guilty purchases um, of like two of my favourite like auto buy authors. Normally I do automatically buy or even pre-order their books, but I'm out of habit because when I was living at the flat I didn't always have funds to buy these books and um, now this is kind of like the first month where I don't actually have to pay rent so I've got like money to spare I suppose like even the vet bills so I'm just like okay this is cool so I'm really excited about these so first of which is Breathless by Jennifer Niven now I did have the ebook of this that I did start reading but I didn't get round to like reading and completing it so I um, purchased the book, as I always do with my favourite authors, and Jennifer Niven, she's written All the Black Places, which has become a Netflix movie, and it's a really, really good movie, I really liked it. She's also written Hold Not the Universe, that's about like the world's fattest female teen, and I think if I remember 
or whether it's that book or not but I think like there's a boy and he can't quite see people's faces right he has some sort of like disability I think that's the book I've read so many books like I think that's the book so yeah so this is breathless and so this is literally about a girl called Claudine and they are a budding writer, they've got college, um, they're focused on being a famous author and they really really sort of like want to experience sex and she doesn't really want to be in love, she just wants to experience it but then all of a sudden her dad and her mum are splitting up and the entire world just flips upside down and so she moves off with her mum to a remote mosquito infested island off the coast of Georgia and so they can start their new life of trying to mend their hearts and then she meets Jeremiah Crew, who's a local trail guide with a passion for photography and he's brush, enigmatic and even more infuriatingly he's the one who seems to see Claude for who she wants to be. So she decides that she wants to like sleep with him, not for love or anything, but is she gonna sort of like feel things? Like, you know, is you know, is this person gonna be one person that's gonna mend her heart? So it's Jennifer Niven. It's a contemporary romance with also trauma of a parent breakup. I love Jennifer Niven. I have really I mean, I love her first book, it's like one of my all-time favourite books. And then her second book that she wrote, I also really enjoyed as well, which I'm due a reread actually. So this is a new book, she hasn't written a book since then. So I've got my hands on it now. And this is the American hardback. So there is a paperback that is the British one. And that is available as well, it is a lot cheaper. But I really like hardbacks and if a hardback is available and isn't too expensive, I will get my hands on it. And I really like this cover, also because it's blue, we match. And yeah, I just I just love hard covers so much more. So I'm really really excited that I have this book in my hands now. And then the other book that I've got is Jennifer L. Armentrout's book from Blood and Ash. This she has self-published because this book is printed on Amazon. So she does this sometimes. She sort of like self-publishes her books, and sometimes she gets her books published. Um, so yeah. So this is a uh, book by Amazon. It's bigger than you think it's going to be. Like I was really surprised by how thick this book was going to be. It's a hell of a chunk. One hell of a chunky chunk book. So this is one of her fantasy books, but I've heard really, really good things about it so far, which is why I went and got it. And since then there is a sequel that's out for this. I feel like this is just one of those books that should have been like really hushed and quiet until as of recent, like everyone's just been getting it and reading it. So this is about a maiden who is chosen from birth to usher a new era. Poppy's life has never been her own. She, she has the life of a maiden and it's solitary. She's never to be touched, never to be looked upon or spoken to or experienced pleasure. So she waits for the day of her ascension and she would rather be with the guards fighting back the evil that took her family than preparing to be found worthy by the gods but choice has not been hers because the evil kingdom's future rests on her shoulders and something she's not sure that she even wants for herself because a maiden has a heart and a soul and longing and when Hawk, who's a golden eye guard, on a bound to ensure her ascension enters her life, destiny and duty becomes tangled with desire and need and he incites her anger, makes her question everything that she believes in and tempts her with the forbidden. Forsaken by the gods and feared by mortals, the fallen kingdom is rising once more, determined to take back what they believe is theirs through violence and vengeance. And as the shadow of those cursed draw nearer, the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred. Poppy is not the only on the verge of losing her heart and being found unworthy by the gods, but also her life when every blood-soaked thread that holds her well together begins to unravel. So, I mean, it's... I'm not really, I don't really go into fantasy books, so Jennifer Armentrout, she's written all sorts of books, she's written like science fiction books, um, like if we're going from like the series of Obsidian, and she's written contemporary, she's written paranormal because like the Covenant series, she's written new adult because of the Wait For You series, and the Origin series also. So she's, she's written a lot of books here, the Dark Elements series, so a lot of paranormal she's written of, 
uh, Storm and Fury. I've got that book actually, the Harbinger series, Storm and Fury. Uh, Titan books, oh, Wicked, those books as well. And then she's got like other new adult books like Tempting the Best Man and Moonlight Sins. And then she's got standalone novels of like mixtures of contemporary, even thrillers. So she's written all sorts of genres. So this is like a fantasy book. And I'm not really sure if this is her like first fantasy book. Um, but this is the first book in, it's called the Blood and Ash series and like I say there's a sequel that's out now. Now it's Jennifer Armitrow, she has amazing writing style and I've read quite a few of her books now. I mean I can tell you now even just looking at this list that I have read quite a few books. Um, so I've, I've read Wait For You which is her new adult book, um, the first book in that series. I've read Half Blood and Pure from the Covenant series, love those books. I've read the whole of the Lux series, absolutely love those books as well. And I've also read, I've read Wicked, the first book in the Wicked series, really really like that as well. And I think that's all I've read so far because um, I haven't yet read her standalone books, which I need to get my head on so this is another reason why I bought it because I love her books like no matter what she writes no matter what genre she just has amazing writing style she knows how to keep me hooked and she always leaves me wanting more and the fact that I've also had really really good things about this book also leaves me wanting to read this book as well so I'm really excited and if I do enjoy this book then I can go on and purchase the sequel I could have been like really really like you know what I'm gonna get the sequel as well but I'm like holding myself back a bit on series and sequels and not just splurging too much and just going too crazy um just because you know of books and everything so yeah i was just trying to <clears throat> trying to behave myself like with things like this but i'm really excited about these books all the same um these three books in this um part of the clip like i've just I'm really really i'm really excited about all three of these so i might um just try and give those reads soon um, but we shall see we shall see my friends I just want to very very quickly haul some bookmarks because I won a giveaway on Twitter I was one of the few selected to win the signed bookmarks by Julie C Dow and I've literally I've got two of these ones here where one side says this where it says Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix and it says the stunning reimagining of the evil queen so yes, yeah, so there's that one. And on the back here, it says here, The Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Juicy Dell, which I believe is like her first book. So yeah, that's this side. And as you can see, she signed them um, just there. So she's signed them. And they are there. And then the third one that came is this one here. It says, Family Curses always start somewhere. And then she signed this one as well. And I love that little mirror there. And then on the back here, it says the mirror and this is a four book fairy tale series by julie c dow donielle clayton jc cervantes and ll mckinley so yeah if you like your fairy tale remakes and all of that stay tuned for this little book um but yeah i'm i love bookmarks so i was very very flattered to have won these and um look forward to using them as i always do i had some more books that came in the mail yesterday so the first of which i've got here is maybe not by colin hoover so this is the novella to maybe someday which is what i'm currently reading so this is about the characters of warren and bridget so it's like their little story which is cool because they're two characters that are really like quite funky and um, they are in maybe someday they are the roommates of Ridge who's like the main guy character in maybe someday um, Bridget is just a very spunky character so this is their story and like how they live together and their relationship together sort of thing so it's a very very short novella but I just I just like to have these things in paper format sort of thing um, just physical format and uh, especially if I really really enjoy it and then the next bit that's come in the mail is Point of Retreat by Colin Hoover and this is the second book that's in the Slammed series so it's a continuation on so this is the second book and I do have the first and the final book on um, order to, to arrive and then this book here I've got is Losing Hope and this is the sequel to Hopeless which I do have Hopeless um, I haven't read Hopeless yet um, so Losing Hope 
is the um, the side of the guy character I think who is called Dean Holder. In Hopeless we follow Sky's story and in Losing Hope we learn about Dean Holder so yes yeah, kind of like a uh, spin-off sequel I suppose you can call it. So yes, yeah, so three more Colin Hoover books. So I've got here a couple of books that are in the same series by Colin Hoover. I've got Slammed by Colin Hoover which is book number one in this trilogy and this literally arrived today. So I'll read to you on the back what this trilogy is about. So it says here that it captures the magic of confusion of first lovers. Two young people forge an unlikely bond before discovering the fate of other plans. Following the death of her father, 18 year old Lakin becomes the rock for her mother and her brother. She appears resilient and tenacious, but inside she's losing all hope. She meets her neighbour Will, who is a handsome 21 year old whose mere presence leaves her flustered and passion for poetry thrills her. Not long after a heart stopping first date, during which each recognises something profound and familiar in the other. They are slammed to the core when a shocking discovery brings a new relationship to a sudden halt. And then um, I've also got the third book, This Girl, as well, that finally arrived. Um, so I've literally like, got all the books on Colleen Hoover now that have arrived from eBay, which is really awesome. They've managed to arrive all before the end of the month, which is brilliant. So that's it from me for this video. Let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these books that I've mentioned in today's video and what you thought about them. Also, which book do you think I should read first as well? Which book you would like me to do a review on and sort of read from? And yeah, all my social media links is always a link down below in the description if you'd like to follow me elsewhere. Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, I am there. I love making bookish friends, so if you guys want to be my friend there, then that is awesome because I love making bookish friends. You guys are awesome. I just love when you guys comment on my videos. It's just it honestly, honestly makes my day. You have no idea. If I get one comment, makes my day. You have no idea. I feel so special and loved in my tiny little heart. So that's it for me, guys. Keep smiling, keep reading, be happy, and most importantly, please stay safe. My name is Katie, and I will see all of you wonderful, awesome people in my next video. Bye.